Um, I'm so excited to be here. I am surrounded by beautiful, delicate things, which is always a little intimidating, but I want to know what made you interested in working with glass. Well, um, I have always been creative and I started out as a young person with um, fabric and sewing and stitching. And then at, at some point I visited the Springfield, Ohio Museum, uh, just their regular art museum and they were they were offering classes and just a variety of things and so i signed up for glass and it was like oh whoa this is way better than this sewing stuff <laughs> <laughs> well it's funny you say that because when you and i first met you were likening your work to quilting oh yes um, and so how funny that that you mm -hmm. were were so aware of that world and then thought oh but this is better uh, so you knew immediately that that this was going to be something you took to yes and i took a couple other classes there and then went on to a couple things in columbus Ohio and then it's just been ever since. Um, tell me about sort of the process behind what you do. It's so much more than art. Well there is some technical things yeah. to it. Um, the kiln is used to reach a certain temperature to get the glass to do what you want it to do. Mm -hmm. So glass, sheet glass, and other glass too, kind of wants to be round in the heat. It wants to ball up or um, come together. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you don't want that to happen, so you don't want to get it that hot. You want to be at some lesser temperature where the things are going to be fused together and, and, and attached permanently, but not all balled up. Okay. Uh -huh. And so there's a time temperature ratio that goes on, and that's what the whiteboard is with all those instructions. Yeah. The kilns are programmed to, for a certain effect for your product. And so then I can just go down the board and say, okay, I want number three, and I can then the kiln's programmed to do that. Mm -hmm. And then it, you have more successful work. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Now, before we started shooting, you were showing me um, what, was, what was going to be a bowl, but shrunk up. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yes. Not to, not to call no. out the mistake you showed me. No, no, but no. I, no, no. I, no, no. That's there are, so there, there's a whole me. bucket of mistakes right by your feet. <laughs> so it doesn't, not everything is, comes out the way you want. So, yeah. yes, uh, Emily pushed the wrong button on the controller and it went too hot. And instead of saying, staying bowl shaped, it all went yeah. down into a flat thing. Yeah. And uh, because it was too hot and was got more liquid than I wanted. But it, it happens and it's fine. It's just a learning curve. Sure. Now, how much less often does it happen now? As, as opposed to when you first started. Are you, are, do those accidents still happen even though you've been doing it for a long time? Oh yeah. Or do you find? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, and sometimes you just, you kind of guess, you know, I want it to go to this temperature. Right. And I think that's what the right, you know, thing. The, the good news is if you go a little bit less and it's not quite soft enough, mm -hmm. um, then you cook it again. Okay. And get to where you want to be. So it's always better to air a little less. <laughs> yes. So as I was talking to Greg, I was really fascinated by the amount of chemistry that is involved in, in what the two of you do. Does that side fascinate you as well? Or are you more um, excited about the process of designing and creating artistically? Um, I, no, I really like the chemical chemistry side of it too, mm -hmm. where the glasses react. Yeah. And especially the copper bearing and the sulfur bearing glasses, because that's how glass gets the color it is, is from chemicals and minerals. Mm -hmm. And so you can either avoid those reactions or you can use them to your benefit. And if you have those copper bearing and sulfur bearing glasses touching each other, they will make a line between them or a black space or a cloud kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so you can use that to your advantage in your design. If you know how. And if you want to, okay. yes, if that's your purpose. Yeah. Yes. You don't want it to just show up when you don't want it. Right. <laughs> so. 
and tell me about some of the pieces that you have done with actual botanicals. Oh, yes, it's called uh, fossil vitra, meaning fossils in glass. It's actual plant material that then is um, dusted with enamel, which is a kind of glass powder, and then the glass is fused onto it, um, and the, obviously the plant burns away because it's fired to 1410. Right. And so you, then you take out the piece of glass and you have the exact impression of the plant or seeds or whatever it is you put in there, now fused to the glass in the color of your choice because the enamel comes in like 80 colors. Yeah. You were showing me some, and especially the pieces you had that had the roots were oh. just so cool. <laughs> um, so it's obvious that you um, like trying different types of artistry with your glass. You were telling me that you are now doing casting. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Kiln casting is uses the kiln to heat glass into more thick panels. Mm -hmm. Casting is usually thought of as being a part of a glass blowing process mm -hmm. where the molten glass is used to make 3D forms. Right. Um, but I, I'll... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love glasses and this is a three, more of a 3D type structure. Yeah. This was cast in a mold I made. And so I'm kind of headed in that direction and um, I've taken a couple classes with the big national name person mm -hmm. and I'm gonna work with her more. And so th these cast pieces, these are very, very, this is very elementary as far as casting goes. And so, but I will be doing more 3D works, so stay tuned. Yes. <laughs> so what about the, the casting is exciting to you? I feel like everything you do is so cool. I, I would be reticent to try something new because why would you? What you're doing is so cool. So what was it when, when you kind of wanted to dive into casting that made you excited? Using sheet glass is kind of flat. Yeah, okay. You know, and Casting is an opportunity to more go more 3D. Yeah. And it it can speak in a different way. It's interesting that you say it's flat because I'm thinking specifically about a piece you showed me that has the three little birds on the beach. Oh. And there's so <laughs> much texture there. Um, and that's what, what really stood out to me was um, the texture in the little feathers and the texture of the pebbles in the sand and all of that. So to me, that doesn't read as flat at all. Is that something that you really strive for with your work? Is that dimension? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That textural dimensional uh, quality um, elevates it from the flat flat. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, trying to do that all the time. And even if I'm doing a, a landscape from glass powder, getting that dimension and the texture is, is really important. What yeah. is the best part of creating glass art for you? Is there one part in particular that you really love? Boy, that's really hard. <laughs> um, well, mornings are the best. Mm because that's when you open the kiln and it's Christmas and you get to see what's in there and get things out. <laughs> Unless you get so. coal <laughs> in the sense that, you know, something is broken or which but happens, that does, yes? Yes, occasionally, but, but very, very little. I yeah. mean, the, I put a lot of research into how to prevent that. Yeah. <laughs> So that it almost seems like you're a process girl. You you like the research. You like, uh, you know, figuring out those moving parts almost I, as yes. much as Christmas morning and seeing the the end product. Is that fair? Yes, I am definitely a process person, and partly because of that, I probably have twelve or fourteen different processes that I use to yeah. make things, and they're all fun. They're all fun and have a different look and feel. Um, to, to what you make. And, and do you bounce around from... Oh, yes. So you oh, aren't, yeah. uh, you don't oh, get in that... No, boring. <laughs> <laughs> boring. <laughs> what is the hardest part of, of what you do? Coming up with new designs that... Um, uh, not exactly that. I can see something in my head and how to translate it into glass. Yes. 
And so you kind of have to work backwards from, okay, if I want this look, then I have to use these colors and I have to use this kind of mold to shape it the way I want it. And I have to cut or use frit in a certain way to get, so it, yeah, working backwards mm -hmm. is a re reverse engineering, yeah. I think is one term you used earlier that is happening all the time. Uh, knowing that you have so many different processes, do you have a favorite? I think the reactions. I think the chemical reactions yeah. are probably one of my favorite things. Yeah. And I make little bitty bowls that are that are chemical reactions mm -hmm. primarily. And um, those are really fun. And then powder landscapes. The powder landscapes are really, really fun. It's very it's more painterly mm -hmm. than what you've seen here, which is more cutting glass and putting pieces back together. And because it uses powder and um, those are really good. Do you feel like this, I know that this wasn't your career your whole life, but do you feel like it's your life's work? Do you feel like leaving these, the world a little more pretty uh, <laughs> than you found it, is that your life's work? My life's work has to do with the name of our company, which is Soul Eye Glass. Mm -hmm. And that's a reference back to a Bible verse, which is something like, I'm not gonna quote it exactly, <laughs> but something like, if thy eye be single and open, thy body be filled with light. Mm. And what better way to transmit light than glass? <laughs> well, you couldn't have put a prettier bow on the end of this interview. <laughs> Em, you are a joy. This has been really lovely, and I just really love your work and appreciate it so much. Thank you for taking Thank the you. time today. Thank you. It was lovely to be here.